Obviously a disappointing day, but the series as a whole, it's got to feel good to beat these guys twice, right? Yeah, I mean, the first part of it, you know, we treat every game like a playoff game, so it wasn't about a sweep or anything. This was the game because it was the one in front of us. Um, just did not get off to a very good start, and they just they have too much talent on the mound to, you know, you can't, can't get that deep into a hole. Now, with that being said, um, I mean, getting it to 10-6 and having guys on base, um, I think that tells you how good our team actually is. And um, we'll clean up the mistakes. We actually just went through and we bulleted like seven things because it's about the play. Um, they weren't not ready or anything like that. We didn't execute pitches early. Uh, we didn't execute, you know, obviously a pop-up priority. Don't know if we'd have won the game if we would have caught the pop-up, but I would have liked to seen it, especially as we started to put pressure on them and get back in the game. You can't field a rolling ball barehanded. You have to field it with your glove. Um, we made an out down 10-1, and it's just Jordan playing hard, trying to get something going. But you got to, you know, continue to play smart. Uh, we made the third out at third base. Um, you know, so let's focus on that and then move forward. I'm very proud of the team. I mean, it doesn't change next weekend. I mean, it's the same caliber of opponent and the same thing the weekend after that. But, um, you know, this three weeks when you get that schedule handed to you based on, you know, Omaha team, you know, wire to wire number one team in the country last year. Um, and then another Omaha team, like, um, you know, to come out with three series wins is a good thing. Um, and then we know what we have to do to get better. I mean, you touched on a little bit there, but down 10 nothing, and really didn't feel like you guys were out of the game yet. I mean, just does that speak to just what this offense is capable yeah, of? Yeah, I think it's maturity too. You know, um, you look at a guy like, um, you know, Gavin in the leadoff spot, a bunch of college at bats, Trey, really good weekend for Trey. Um, you know, um, I picked you guys up yesterday, getting them in here to, to talk to you because that's who you should have been asking for after last night's game. Um, or I don't know how that works, but um, you know, Dylan Cruz is the best player in the country. White is special. Uh, really like what Beloso has given us as a professional type hitter behind those guys. And then whether it's Josh Pearson, Paxton Kling, Braden Joe Bear, Jordan Thompson, Brady Neal, Alex Malazzo, like it's a great lineup and uh, they know what they're doing. And um, again, that's a pitcher I think today that will be a major league pitcher um, in beam and uh, you know didn't get to the fifth and so credit to those guys we just we got to do a better job on the front end of just keeping ourselves in the game and um, I think it'll be a good learning experience from today. What, what do you think did we'll, you tell them after the game? You know a lot of the same you know it's um, you know we need to restructure just a couple things um, with what we do for guys to help them be successful um, in terms of how we uh, use them from the mound, how we design their outings, um, how we set up hitters, um, how they execute pitches, which, hey, you know, one of the stories of the year is how much better we are from the mound. Um, and so we need to make a small tweak, in my opinion, with a, a lot of how we're doing it, and um, I'm excited about that. Um, and then, um, you know, move on to the next. And, um, you know, this is like something – I've never even seen. I mean, the SEC has always been the best league, but I can't imagine it being better than this right now. I think uh, I just was looking at the RPI last night, and we have 13 of the 14 teams are in the top 50, and 14 is number 60. That's a quarter of the teams, I think, um, in the top 60. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's a great challenge, but it, it makes those things that we're talking about with the play really important. What do you think was sort of the – what do you think, sir, was the crux of the issue with that trip today? Uh, you know, I mean, Ahuna's a good hitter. I mean, and, um, you know, got to that 3-2 spot yesterday and he hit a fastball out. Um, and so we tried to go change up, and he threw a pretty darn good pitch. And I'm not saying it was a ball or a strike, but he threw a pretty good pitch. So the walk there hurts. And then um, Dryling is a really good player. Um, I think he got a swing, and then Moore got a swing, and then – it just, you know, when it went bad, we just got to get him to just keep it under control. I was talking to Ben McDonald about that today, and that's something he learned in the major leagues is, like, instead of giving up four, you kind of it's a learned skill to only give up one right there. And um, he certainly has the stuff to do it. He'll probably pitch on Tuesday in some capacity, only through 21 or 22 pitches, and we need to get him back out there because if we're going to accomplish the things that we want to as this team, then he's got to be a part of this in a big way. Y'all made a uh, April Fool's joke saying Paul Skeens was hitting threes. Any any thoughts of allowing him to hit yet? Uh, 
I don't think we need to do that when our worst game of the weekend, we had 15 hits and seven runs on the board. I'd much rather take the sure um, seven plus 12 punch outs, you know, not many runs on the board. And um, it's also what's best for him. You know, a lot of has been made of why he is improving so much. Well, um, when you're not squatting down as a catcher all game long, um, when you're not swinging a bat and all that rotation, um, you know, he's allowed now from a pitching standpoint to tap into all of his physical talent and gifts. And I like the results of that. And not only is it better for us, it's better for him. And, you know, um, I want the best pitcher in the country. If somebody's going in the portal that's the best pitcher in the country, I want him to come to LSU next year. And how we treat these guys, um, I think that's a good model to point to. When you're down 10-0 to zero after two innings, mm -hmm. like, which is, I mean, this offense, obviously, again, 15 hits, still seven runs. I mean, like, is the taller ask from on the hitters to kind of overcome the deficit, or do you think it's, like, more on the staff? Man, I don't know. <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> I think we just, we win and lose as a team, and so yeah. I don't really think of it that way. And, um, you know, uh, it was saying, one of our big sayings is, you know, selfless is always placing the needs of the team above your own. And uh, these guys are doing that, and so we don't transfer blame either. That was mm -hmm. a big Coach Pertman thing. There's no TOB, no transfer of blame. And so, you know, is this the, you know, somebody doesn't play well, somebody else has to play well to, to pick us up. And, you know, we, uh, we lost the other – the last game we lost was Arkansas, I believe. Um, you know, and we pitched phenomenal for nine-plus innings, and offense didn't quite pick us up enough. So um, you play in this league, it's going to happen. And, just work on all of it and get better.